A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 77, combining the water outlets of the axle pump and hand pump to feed a single check valve, followed by piping the whistle. The other week I noticed that some of the stock levels in my boxes of bits were getting low. Time, I think, to restock. Here are some coned unions for quarter inch pipe. I've been using a lot of those lately. I also bought some quarter inch pipe check valves and some quarter inch pipe T pieces. And one of these. This is a very important part of the installation. It's an inline check valve. And this is going to be fitted between the hand pump feed and the check valve on the boiler. Originally, the engine just had a twin axle pump and a hand pump. I've also fitted a live steam injector, and that needs a check valve of its own, which is the main check valve on the right hand side of the boiler. Here, I'm tightening the check valve onto the pipe, or should I say, I'm tightening the union nut of the pipe onto the check valve. And this time, I'm using two Barco adjustable spanners, which do not round the nuts. This clip shows where the check valve will be positioned in the finished installation. It is of course connected to the outlet of the hand pump. I need to make an adapter for the check valve because the check valve's thread is 1 8 BSP and I prefer to use ME threads and in this case I'm using 3 8 by 32 threads per inch so I need to make an adapter from those two thread sizes one to fit on the check valve and one to fit a T-piece into. The first thing to do is to drill a hole tapping size in a piece of brass. I'm drilling the hole quite deep into this piece of brass, it's only a piece of scrap, and actually I'm enlarging a hole that was already there. Once I drilled the hole, it was time to thread it. And in this clip I'm threading one end, 1 8 BSP, to fit on the check valve. I threaded the hole by hand, just by rotating the chuck, but once I'd done that, the lathe is in back gear and I put it into reverse to unwind the tap from the hole. I like anything that speeds up the job without spoiling it. Once I'd done this, I turned the piece of bar around in the chuck and parted it off. The lathe is still in back gear and thinking about it, I could have gone into normal speed for this. It's only brass and it parts off very easily. I need to know which end is which, so I thought to myself, well, I'll file a chamfer, and this will tell me which end is which. In this clip, the other end, which is chamfered, is threaded 3 8 by 32 threads per inch to allow the fitting of a T-piece. While on the subject of T-pieces, I needed to find one that wasn't a new one because I intend to remove the paint from it, so it's a bit pointless buying a new painted T-piece to remove the paint. How did I remove the paint? Well, the usual method using some standard cellulose thinners in the cap of an aerosol can. Yes, I know this looks a bit like a urine sample. That's because this is not pure cellulose thinners. I've used it many times for removing paint. Generally, for a while at least, I recycle the cellulose thinners, but eventually throw it away. Here goes the tea piece with the badly chipped paint into the aerosol cap with some cellulose thinners in the bottom. The next part of the job is very easy. I just go down to the house and make a cup of tea, and by the time I get back, the paint had fallen off the part. I cleaned it up initially using a piece of Scotch-Brite, followed by using my polishing spindle. I'm going to fit the tea piece to the adapter first, using some Loctite 542 to make sure the thread doesn't leak. And here I am applying a generous amount to the thread. Loctite 542 is a very effective paint remover, but I don't need to bother about that because the paint's already gone. I screw the T-piece as far as I can into the adapter. I'm not going to use a pair of pliers or anything stupid like that. I fit the adapter into the chuck of my Myford lathe. Why the Myford? I use the Myford lathe for jobs like this because the chuck jaws are solid. They do not have grooves in them like the rest of my lathes do. So if the part rotates in the chuck, it doesn't leave rings. Here's a pipe that I bent in a previous episode. It's the outlet pipe from the water bypass valve. Before I can proceed any further, I need to attach my adapter to the original check valve, once again using copious amounts of Loctite 542. 
I've purposely missed out a whole section of the video, and this was the part where I showed the back of adjustable spanner being used to rotate the T-piece, which in turn screwed the adapter firmly onto the check valve. The other pipe fits on the bottom of the T-piece. This is the pipe from the outlet of the hand pump after the check valve. For the benefit of the owner of the engine, I think it's worth mentioning that before using the hand pump, you must close the water bypass valve, because if that is open, the hand pump will take the water from the tank and then feed it back into the tank, and it will take an awful long time to fill the boiler, possibly an eternity, and probably not at all. In this clip, once again using two barco spanners, I'm checking the tightness of unions at both ends of the check valve. Now for a nice simple job, I'm going to pipe the whistle valve to the whistle adapter that goes through the spectacle plate. Here's the whistle valve, and the unions are 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I'm using coned union adapters at each end of the pipe, which is 3 16 of an inch in diameter, not a quarter of an inch. I didn't need to put this small piece of pipe in the acid bath. To clean it up, I used some Scotch-Brite, followed by Brasso, then a cloth to finally polish it. I'm very pleased to announce there is only one more pipe to make. It's the one that goes from here, the blower valve, to the blower in the smoke box. Quite a long piece of pipe. I may have to do it in two pieces. But once that's in place, all I have to do is seal the tank and finally put the engine back together. The engine will be picked up on Saturday the 3rd of February 2024. I'm going to finish off by showing you a close-up of these thread adapters that I use. This allows the use of a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe in a union nut that is designed for a quarter inch pipe. I also have some 3 16 of an inch to 5 30 seconds of an inch adapters, but I don't need to use those on this engine. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.